Hey, Pop. Hey, man. So, can you tell me what happened to the car? It stopped. <laughs> yeah, that's about it. <laughs> so here we are, and we're stuck on the road, and we're trapped in Oregon, and there are trees everywhere. Spinning. And that's why your video is late this week. So we're going to get you a better video next week. And that's what we're going to do. All right, here we go. Wish us luck. Hey, you guys, it's me, B. Riley. Welcome back to the channel, and thanks so much for tuning in. And today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be talking about how to make a pick guard when you don't have a template or an outline to follow off of before. So, you know, typically speaking, when you got a pick guard, you can kind of borrow one from a friend or, or get something going. But in the case of this base that we're working on, uh, the pick card's kind of unusual, and nobody's making reproductions for it. It's kind of unusual to such a degree that even Gibson can't provide you with something. Uh, there are great variations between the years. You see subtle differentiations in the lines uh, that can be missed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to use your pick guard screw holes to kind of build yourself an outline uh, using a carbon transfer, kind of like a, like a pencil rubbing, uh, by just, you know, like we do with the checking, just breaking off some graphite, grounding it down, and then working it into the paper. And then basically from there on, kind of extrapolating the outline from there by using the pickguard screws as an aid. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that today. Um, kind of just a fun project, you know, not exactly the most earth-shaking stuff, uh, but it's useful and it comes off great. And, um, you know, hopefully you guys enjoy it. Anyway, here we go. Let's get started. All right, so here we go. Here's what you're gonna need. You're gonna need some bits of paper, you're gonna need a pencil, you're gonna need a small knife, a couple basic hand tools, stuff like that. And then the most sophisticated piece of equipment that we've got for making our pick guard today, which is whatever cereal box you've got in your house. Now, I used to use manila folders, go to the office depot and buy that stuff, uh, so that I would have um, you know, a good template to go off on these. But to tell you the truth, you really don't need that. And uh, for those of you guys who are working in sometimes rural areas and things like that, you might not have access to an office supply shop. But chances are probably pretty good that you've got some food in the pantry that's coming in a cardboard box. Now you've put your paper over it and you've done your graphite uh, where you've rubbed across the paper and now you have prevalent screw locations that you can both feel and see through the paper. Once you've got this, you're actually looking really good. Because from there on out, all you really need to do is take a pair of these calipers and replicate the shapes by just kind of eyeballing it in segments. So the first thing you do is, is you want to establish, you know, the line that you're going to follow. You've, you're not going to be able to see where the pick guard ends and where it starts. So instead, you've got your screw holes. And what you do is you take about a quarter of an inch, maybe a little bit more because you want to overcut it. And you just go ahead and put a notch, like an eyebrow over the screw markation on the paper. And when you're doing this, you're doing this in such a way that you're kind of guessing, you know, the west, east, north, south orientation of the line. So you're gonna make all these little dashes above them. And what this ensures is, is first, that we're starting off with the neck pocket. That has gotta be the first thing that you take care of. In the automotive world, that would be like uh, aligning quarter panels before you do doors and fenders. Those things can be realigned later. The neck pocket is irrefutable. Once you cut that in, that's it. And you're going to want a clean cut because, you know, that's kind of one of the first places people look on old Gibsons. They start looking at that neck pocket because it's the first place that it might break. So from here on out, you don't have to guess the whole pickguard. You only have to take them in segments. So number one, number two, number three, number four, and five down to that last one. And essentially what you're doing is you're looking at the photograph online, and now instead of replicating the entire pick guard, all you have to do is replicate the compound curve that covers section two, or the compound curve that section 
three covers. And you basically just kind of puzzle piece it this way. It's like those um, mosaic art projects we used to have in school. We could not do Van Gogh ourselves as a whole, but when you took the whole classroom and you broke the picture down into singular squares in which one person was just focused on that one little area, all of a sudden, A Starry Night was born. I like to, when I am drumming up a, a Picard template, like to try to put um, some of the ancillaries back on. I find that they work great as, you know, kind of uh, landmark markers. You know, you can look at them and you can really start to compare uh, a photograph of the completed Picard versus the, you know, the paper that you've got, and it, it really helps you kind of find the way. It's like trees along the roadway, you know, a hundred years later, you know exactly where you're standing because that tree. This is super basic. I did this one the other day in the middle of the night and was just kind of throwing it together. We're gonna go ahead and see how it matches to the cardboard one, but essentially what I've got here is, it's just a rubbing. It's like if you're doing a rubbing on like a gravestone. You can see here that I was working with a small piece of paper that wasn't big enough. So I left the parts out that uh, I didn't have to guess. That would be very, very easy to follow through if they weren't on the template, which is the follow through on the drop down here. Um, I need to deepen this a bit, and then we need to bring this out. And then obviously the neck pocket is the wrong depth. But if you actually look um, at this comparatively to a photograph of that same pick guard on a 67, it's actually pretty close. There's a couple spots that need some work. But what I can do now is I can transcribe this over to the cardboard. And then I have something that's a little bit more hardy to work with. And when I lay it flat, it lays flat on the guitar and it gives me a much more accurate depiction of how that pick guard's gonna fit when it's all bolted down. Uh, you guys might remember if you saw in the earlier episode that there was a huge hole here and a crack running down the side of the base. We have filled that. Um, so at least now we don't have to try to modify the pick guard to cover such a huge amount of acreage. When we actually fixed that, what we did was, it might be difficult to see, but you can actually see the fill line here, and then it bells out at the bottom, and then also under the bridge. And what this does is, because the grain is running north-south instead of east-west, uh, this means that this particular plug is not only filling the hole of the original pickup, but where the crack had started to form because of the hole from the pickup, we've now belled it out and created a bit of a, um, a butterfly joint, where any movement down in a way that that junction would tighten. So as long as this plate's here, that crack is a non-issue. We got that stud back in there and it's all done. Let's go ahead and see about getting a slightly more refined product and cut down into the cardboard.
Okay, so here's what we got going. We've got a good cut line, uh, but we do see some wavering. You see it along the line here, and you guys might have noticed that I, I didn't kill the black line on the bottom, but I did manage to kill it or completely kill it up top. Uh, and the reason is, is because these pick guards on this uh, model, they tend to ride really high. There's a an almost unnatural amount of space between the lower horn termination and the actual pick guard, especially when you contrast it against the EV1s, EV2s, where this part of the guard really rests right up against the contour. But uh, since this is a 67, we do have a newer style neck joint. Um, and on those, uh, you know, full size guards, we do see Gibson getting away from the heavily sculpted horn and starting to get to a little bit more of a boxy horn. You see them on the, uh, the SGs from 67, 68, 69, 70, um, and up until the early 70s when they start to go to their pickup reposition uh, and uh, alteration. You can see the 72 standards. The pickup is in a different location than it was on the earlier models, and the horns are different. Now, when I start off sanding these, I start off with about 600 grit. Sometimes I'll even use like 320. It depends on how even the edges have come out. If the edges have come out really good, I'll stick with a higher grit. Uh, if the edges are a bit uh, jagged and, you know, they have some distortions, I'll go ahead and stick with like the 320 and just kind of use it more as a file than anything. I'll stick it uh, over the palm of my hand, keep my fingers flat, and run it along the edge. This also rounds the edges, top and bottom, and gives you that kind of uh, drop on a plate glass window that you want as far as uh, Gibson single plies. You may notice that on the actual front of the pick guard, I've drawn, uh, you know, kind of a rounded off. It's kind of like a funny shape. And basically what it is, is it's uh, the profile of the edge that you should be doing. On these single plies, you should have a slightly rounded top and bottom where it meets versus a fender where you just still have the ramp. Well, you guys, there's our video for the week. And uh, obviously I was feeling a bit contemplative because, you know, it's 4th of July. And I don't know about you guys, but 4th of July was always a really big deal when I was growing up uh, in New York. Uh, it was a lot of parades and things like that. So it always uh, makes me a bit uh, reflective. So... Appreciate you guys sticking with me on that one. As far as this pick guard, I feel really good about it. Um, you guys might have noticed that when I'm doing countersinking, I'm not using an actual countersink bit. What I'm using is a Dremel bit uh, that is a really worn out abrasive conical bit meant for shaping. And uh, I just kind of lightly pressure that into the pick guard where the hole is. And uh, it kind of does as much of the work with the temperature as it does with the abrasive. So instead of getting a really rough cut, you get this really smooth cut that if you just lightly do it, it kind of pressures the plastic aside. And uh, you know, when you go to wet sanding and buffing the pick guard, all of a sudden it really comes through and it gives you a nice clean result. And it does it slowly so that you can kind of measure because you know, you gotta remember uh, certain strats and tellies and, and Les Pauls and things like that. You know, that uh, countersink is slightly different. So you wanna make sure that you're you're doing it in such a way that you are getting the screw completely submerged down into the pick guard. This way you don't have pick guard screws kind of sticking up and being funny and you know catching your hand or just feeling kind of unpleasant in a tactile sense. Now, as far as this is a finished product, I feel really good about it. However, uh, this top part is a little too heavy. If you look right here, you can see that this arch uh, should be a bit flatter, a bit plainer. It shouldn't have this Mustang-esque bump right there, that little hip. So what I'm going to do is, uh, you know, just uh, very slowly and at my own pace, and this is why we overcut the pick guards the way we do, is I'm just going to trim this line. I'm going to just drop this starting right on this peak and lower it down and then recheck my distance from the center of the screw hole to the actual side here and then cross-reference them with the rest of them on this pick guard. That'll let me know in my final steps that I've gotten really accurate and I've got a really good product there. Anyway, you guys, thanks so much for tuning in. I know this video might've been a bit late, so I apologize for that. Um, currently, right now, just loading up the car and getting ready to actually uh, drive up to Oregon. So I'll check in with you guys if I can from there. I wanna check out some of the music shops up the coast and stuff like that and see if I can, uh, you know, kinda just uh, go, uh, you know, see, something out of the ordinary. I want to see something different, you know? I've kind of been sitting still for the last couple months and I need to get some road underneath me. Anyway, you guys have a beautiful afternoon. Take stuff out, take it apart, play it, whatever you like, or if you need to, just put your feet up, kick back, and, uh, you know, chill with, uh, with this video. But either way, I wish you guys a most beautiful, beautiful afternoon and I will see you guys in the next video.